now broadcasting from beautiful downtown Tallahassee, it's Classic Movie Reviews with Snark. Welcome to today's show. My name is John. As always, you can subscribe to the show on iTunes or follow the links to social media in the podcast show notes. You can also go to snarkymoviereviews.com to read notes, bios, and other random movie thoughts. Remember, this show is completely free and independent. All I ask is that you jump over to iTunes and give me a review. This is the second of the Travel with Obstacles theme and my first attempt to review a silent film. The General 1926 is the movie that set the bar for all future train movies. When you watched Indiana Jones riding in the mine car in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom 1984, they were imitating rail action that was shown in The General 1926. While this movie is primarily a comedy, it is based on action that really occurred during the American Civil War. This film, unlike the next film I will cover, is told from the Confederate view and the battle flag is prominently displayed. I'm not sure this version could be made today. James J. Andrews, a civilian with railroad experience, proposed a scheme to steal a Confederate train and to drive it north, destroying rails, telegraphs, and bridges. The plan called for Andrews, another civilian, and 22 soldiers from Ohio units to head south in civilian clothes to steal a train. The Union Army would move south to capture Huntsville, Alabama, and then move on to the important railroad and river hub at Chattanooga. The commander felt if he could block Confederate reinforcements from coming north by rail, he could take the city. The target of the raid was the Western and Atlantic Railroad. All of the men, save two, made it to the train depot at Big Shanty, which is now named Kennesaw, Georgia. On April 12, 1862, Andrews and his crew hijacked the locomotive by the name of the General, its tender, and the first car. William Allen Fuller, the train's conductor, and two other men began chasing the train on foot. Finally, they found a hand car. You know, those things that two men pump up and down to make go down the railroad track? After over 15 miles, Fuller found a small locomotive named Yana. Fuller used that until he found a larger locomotive at Kingston, Georgia. A few miles south of Adairsville, Georgia, Andrews and his men had destroyed a section of track. Fuller and his group continued on foot until they found a southbound locomotive by the name of the Texas. He chased the other train 51 miles in reverse. As a result of the Union attack, a large number of Confederate trains were moving south. When Andrew's train was stopped by south-moving trains, they had to sit on a side track until they passed. This allowed Fuller to close the gap as he picked up soldiers to help along the way. Just north of Ringgold, Georgia, and its famous tunnel, the general ran out of steam. The Raiders had covered 87 miles and were less than 20 miles from Chattanooga. The Raiders scattered, but were all caught, including the two that never made it to the raid. Andrews and the other civilian were tried as spies and sentenced to be hanged. All of the military men were tried in court martials. Seven of the soldiers were hanged, as were the two civilians. They botched Andrews hanging, and his feet touched the ground, resulting in a slow death. Eight of the prisoners escaped, and six more were released in prisoner exchanges. These Union military men were given the first medals of honor, but the two civilians were not eligible. Cast Buster Keaton, he is one of the greatest actors of the silent film era, and people will fight you about this. Keaton played the role of the engineer of the general, Johnny Gray. I can see a lot of thought went into that name, as they could have called him Johnny Reb instead. Buster Keaton was born into an acting family. He spent his youth working in the Family Vaudeville Act and was associated with Harry Houdini, W.C. Fields, George M. Cohan, Bill Bojangles Robinson, Eddie Cantor, and Al Jolson. At around six months of age, he fell down a flight of stairs and Houdini gave him the nickname Buster. He perfected his stone face during the years with the Family Act. By the time Buster was 21, his father was firmly in the grasp of alcoholism and the act broke up. In 1917, Buster met an actor named Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle who cast Keating in his first film, The Butcher Boy, 1917. Keating made 15 two-reel films with Arbuckle and still found time to serve for 10 months in France as a part of the U.S. Army's 40th Infantry Division. By 1921, Keating was writing, directing, and starring in his own films. Arbuckle was a major star as well, but in 1921, when a young actress, Virginia Rappi, died following a party, but not before she accused Arbuckle of rape. He was tried three times, with two hung juries, and finally a not guilty. 
This stopped Arbuckle's career for a time, but Keaton stayed loyal to his friend. After more than a decade directing under an assumed name, Arbuckle signed a contract to make a comeback, but died that night at the age of 46. Perhaps Buster Keaton's best film was The General 1926. With so many great films under his belt, Keaton reluctantly signed with MGM. The studio wanted to make movies following a proven formula. This put them and Keaton on a collision course. The film made under these conditions was The Cameraman 1928, and it is considered one of his best films. However, Keaton was drinking, disregarding schedules, and fighting with studio heads. By 1932, he was released and had to survive on bit parts at a fraction of his previous salary. By 1947, his career was beginning to rebound. Actor James Mason found a cache of presumed lost Keaton films and got him more attention. Keaton had a small but memorable role in Sunset Boulevard, 1950, as part of the Waxworks. He appeared in Limelight, 1952, with Charlie Chaplin. In 1960, he was given an honorary Oscar for his body of work. Sadly, or happily, the first movies I remember Keaton from are Beach Blanket Bingo, 1965, and How to Stuff a Wild Bikini, 1965. His final film was A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum, 1966, which was released after his death. Marion Mack played the role of Johnny Gray's true love, Annabelle Lee. Mack began making movies in 1921, and with a long hiatus, her career lasted until 1940. However, she is better known as a screenwriter and part of a production team with her husband, Louis Lewin. The General 1926 took six months to shoot and was physically demanding. Following this movie, she basically gave up acting and worked as a screenwriter. In 1969, following a revival of The General 1926, she toured with the movie, giving lectures and interviews about her work with Buster Keaton. Story Train engineer Johnny Gray, Buster Keaton, drives the Western and Atlantic Flyer pulled by the locomotive The General into Marietta, Georgia. As he oils the train, two boys watch him. Johnny goes to see his true love, Annabelle Lee, Mary and Mac. The boys follow him into the house, and he has to trick them into leaving. Annabelle's brother, Frank Barnes, tells him that war has broken out. The brother and the father, Charles Smith, go to enlist in the Confederate Army. Annabelle insists that Johnny enlist as well. Johnny is so excited after his goodbye kiss that he takes a shortcut and vaults the counter to be first in line. When they find out Johnny is a railroad engineer, they refuse to accept his enlistment, saying he will be more value to the South running his train. He tries two more times, but is finally kicked out. Outside, he runs into Annabelle's father and brother, but he refuses to try again. The two men tell Annabelle that Johnny never tried to enlist. She says she will not speak to him until he is in uniform. Dejected, he sits on the engine side rod. The train wheels make three revolutions before he realizes the train is moving. A year later, in the spring of 1862, General Thatcher, Jim Farley, and his spy, Captain Anderson, Glenn Cavender, plan to steal a train at Big Shanty, Georgia, and drive it north to storing tracks, bridges, and telegraph lines as they go. At Marietta, Annabelle gets on the train to visit her father. By chance, Johnny is driving the train. She flaunts her brother's medals for Johnny to see. When the train stops at Big Shanty for breakfast, Anderson and his men get off the train. Annabelle goes to the boxcar to get money out of her trunk. Anderson's men uncouple the boxcar and coaches from the engine and the tender. The Yankees discover Annabelle and take her along so she won't warn the Confederates. The Yankees pull away with the train. When Johnny sees his train leaving, he runs down the track on foot. Johnny finds a hand car and continues his pursuit. The car hits a section of rail that the Yankees have removed and the cart crashes down the hill. Johnny sees a big wheel bicycle and vaults onto the seat. He has a bumpy ride along the tracks. When the stolen train gets to Kingston, Georgia, the engine Texas is waiting on a sidetrack. Anderson changes into a rebel uniform. With the general already gone, Johnny makes it into Kingston. He shouts for help and a group of soldiers get on a flat car. Johnny pulls the pin behind the flat car and takes off. The flat car was not connected to the engine and is left behind. Johnny sees a rail-mounted mortar on a sidetrack. He attaches it to his engine. About the same time, the spies are adding water to their engine. You know, from one of those water towers like the Petticoat Junction girls and their dog used to swim in. 
The Yankees see Johnny coming and head out without shutting the water off. Johnny gets an unexpected bath. Johnny goes back to the mortar. He adds a small handful of powder, some wadding, and the giant mortar round. The mortar fires and the round ends up on the engine floor. Johnny rolls it out the side and goes to load another round. As he begins, the mortar he rolled out explodes. This time he puts all the powder in before he loads. He lights the fuse and hurries forward. He gets his foot stuck in the coupling bar and it begins hitting the rail ties. This bumping makes the mortar fall and points straight towards the engine. Johnny finally gets untangled and climbs all the way forward to the cow catcher. The two trains go into an S-curve and the mortar fires and explodes just behind the stolen train. The spies release the last boxcar to try and slow Johnny. Johnny pushes the boxcar until he can switch it to a sidetrack. He is looking away as the train rolls back onto the main track in front of him. He doesn't know where it came from. He looks away again and does not see the boxcar hit a timber that the spies have thrown on the tracks. When he looks back, he does not know where the boxcar has gone. He sees the timbers on the track and runs forward to the cow catcher where he picks up the first timber. In what is an amazing stunt, he tosses the timber he is holding and flips another off the track. The Yankees move Annabelle to the engine and throw a switch sending Johnny onto a side track. He stops the train in time and heads back to the main track. The Yankees set the final boxcar on fire and leave it in a covered bridge. Johnny pushes the burning car onto a side track. Johnny is busy chopping wood as the Confederate Army retreats, followed by a pursuing Union Army. He finally sees and hides on the floor of the train. The men on the general see that there is only one man on the Texas when they pass over a trestle. Johnny stops his train and hides in the woods where naturally it starts to rain. When night falls, Johnny breaks into a house to steal food. A group of Union officers come in and discuss their plans to take a supply train across the Rock River Bridge so they can attack the Confederates in the morning. Johnny sees the tied-up Annabelle being locked in a room in the house. When the officers leave, Johnny knocks out two soldiers and steals a uniform. He takes Annabelle to the woods, and they have an encounter with a bear and a bear trap. He keeps losing Annabelle, so they decide to stay put until sunup. In the morning, Johnny sees the general. He dumps a bag of military clothes and places Annabelle in the bag. She uncouples the train from the engine. He places her in the boxcar and cringes as crates and barrels are tossed in after her. He knocks out the officer on the train and speeds away going south. Just outside of town, he pulls down a telegraph line and chops through the boxcar wall. He finds Annabelle when he steps on her. Johnny stops to load fence rails for firewood, but they keep flying over the car or knocking out the logs thrown prior. The Yankees are following in the Texas. Another Union train joins the chase as well. Annabelle takes a rope and ties it across the track to two small trees. When she proudly shows Johnny what she has done, he mocks her. When the Texas hits the small trap, the men are pinned to the engine and they are forced to stop and untangle the mess. Johnny chops out the back wall of the last boxcar and drops it on the track, forcing the Texas to stop. He throws all of the cargo out onto the track as well. Johnny stops for water and Annabelle is knocked down by the flow. When they start again, they leave the valve open and it drenches the Union officers on the train behind them. Annabelle is feeding the furnace but rejects wood because it has a hole in it. She also takes time to sweep the train clean. The Texas catches up and couples to the boxcar on the general. Johnny uncouples the boxcar. The Texas pushes it onto a side track and back onto the main track where it is hit by the second Union train, sending the soldiers flying. Johnny attaches a chain to a switch and Annabelle moves the train forward, bending the track. However, she can't stop the train, so Johnny runs downhill after her. When he gets to the bottom, she reverses and he has to run back uphill to catch her. The broken switch sends the two Union trains onto an elevated side track where they crash again and the general gets away. Johnny puts the end of a fence rail into the firebox. He stops on the Rock River Bridge where he piles wood from the tender in the middle of the bridge. He takes the kerosene from the headlamp. He takes the kerosene from the headlamp and pours it on the wood pile. Annabelle kicks the flaming log out and Johnny is trapped on the other side of the fire. She attempts to move the train backwards but goes forward just as Johnny jumps. He falls through a hole in the bridge into the water below. Back in route, Johnny hails a Confederate picket and the guard fires at him. Annabelle reminds him to change out of the Union uniform into the Confederate one Anderson left on the train. In town, Johnny warns the Confederate headquarters of the attack. He and Annabelle are caught in a stampede of the Confederate army moving forward. 
Annabelle goes to her wounded father while Johnny straps on a sword and pistol and follows the army. Back at the bent switch, the Yankee officers are still trying to bend the rail. A locomotive engineer walks up and quickly fixes it with an axe. The Union trains reach the burning Rock River Bridge at the same time as the Union Army. A Union general steps forward and tells the engineer to drive the Texans across as the bridge is not that badly burned. The bridge collapses and the train falls into the river. The Union general gives the oh crap face. The Union army begins to cross the river but is surprised by the attacking Confederates. Johnny stands by an officer, aping his movements. He finally goes to a cannon battery and begins to issue commands. As he talks to each man, that man is shot by a Union sharpshooter. Finally, Johnny swings his sword and the blade flies off, killing the sharpshooter. Johnny yanks the lanyard so hard the cannon fires straight up. He runs, but the ball lands on a dam. The rushing water forces the Yankees to retreat. Johnny orders another gun crew to fire on the Union officers and the train. The train derails and the Confederates capture the supply train. Johnny saves the battle flag and steps on an officer that was observing as he waves it on the clifftop. Johnny marches into town at the head of the victorious Confederate army, but peels off to his train. He finds the Union officer that he knocked out on the train waking up and takes the prisoner to the headquarters. After he tells his story to the Confederate general, he is told to take off the uniform. He is then given the coat of an officer and the surrender sword of the enemy. He does a pose for Annabelle and then is enlisted as an officer. Johnny and Annabelle go to the train and sit on the side rod. He begins kissing her but has to salute passing enlisted men. As more come by, he turns Annabelle so he can kiss her while he continues to salute. World famous short summary. Train moves through Indian territory. The free EPUB for subscribers is on the site, so drop by and get your free copy. If you enjoyed this week's show, please tell your friends, and if you really want to help, drop over to iTunes and give me a review. If you want to comment, recommend a movie, or just say hi, follow the links in the show notes to my site. Beware the Moors.